when you go sh shopping, say in a supermarket, after buying, the person at the counter may issue a receipt to you. The same may be the case when you withdraw or deposit money in the bank. There is always some sort of document that normally accompanies such transactions. It could be a cash deposit slip or a withdrawal slip. These documents act as evidence that the transaction took place and so they are the basis for recording financial transactions. In other words, these documents contain original information about the transactions to be recorded in the books of accounts. They act as documentary evidence to support all entries in the books of accounts. Some of these accounting entries I'm talking about may refer to things like buying and selling of goods, return of goods in trade, payment or receiving of cash and so on. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and today's session I'll be discussing source documents. The source documents that I'll be discussing are definitely the ones that you're seeing on your screen right now. Invoice. An invoice shows claim for money regarding the goods sold on credit. Let's say I sell cars to organizations. When I sell cars to one of my customers and the customer does not pay me immediately, that becomes a credit sale. And so in order to claim for my money from the customer, I'll issue an invoice to my customer. This invoice will contain details like the date of issue, quality and quantity of cars supplied, unit price, and value of the cars. It also includes the terms of credit and the discounts and also the amounts to be paid. Because this kind of invoice is being issued from my business to my customer, it is therefore called an outgoing invoice. In other words, an outgoing invoice, also known as a sales invoice, is an invoice issued to customers. In this case, I'm talking about debtors signifying credit sales. It is from these invoices that we write up the sales debt book, which is also known as the sales journal. Now, sales journal is a book of prime entry, and we shall, look, we shall talk about it in a later session. Likewise, being a car dealer, I have people who, has, who supply me with cars that I resell. If my suppliers deliver cars to my business premises and I am unable to pay them immediately, that would be rendered a credit sale. So in an effort to recover their money, my suppliers will then issue me an invoice. This invoice issued to me will pretty much have the same details like I mentioned earlier. That is, it will have details of goods supplied, the price, the value, the discount, and so on. This kind of invoice is called an incoming invoice, and it's also known as a purchase invoice. So a purchases invoice or an incoming invoice or an inward invoice is an invoice issued by the supplier, which so happens to be the creditor, signifying credit purchases. It is from these invoices that we write up the purchases journal, which is also known as the purchases day book. Purchases journal is a book of original entry, and we shall discuss it further in a later session. In a nutshell, we have two types of invoices. We have the incoming invoices, which are also known as the purchases invoices or the inward invoices. Then we also have the outgoing invoices, which are also known as the sales invoices or the outward invoices. These invoices provide information for credit sales, credit purchases, credit customers, and credit suppliers. Debit notes. To explain what a debit note is, I'll use an illustration of two businesses. I'll use the concept of double entry. Now, in case you're not familiar with double entry, don't worry. You'll catch up. So let's assume I'm a businessman. I buy cars and later resell them. Allow me to first briefly take you through the accounting entries I normally make in the normal transactions. If I want to purchase cars on credit from my supplier, I'll simply make a purchases order so that my supplier delivers to me the cars. So after all the necessary formalities have been done, my supplier delivers 10 cars to my business premises. So how do I treat these in my books of accounts? Well, I'll open up an account and because my supplier has delivered the 10 cars to me on credit, 
to me, the supplier is recorded as a creditor. And so in my books, I'll credit his account with the amounts equivalent to the 10 cars. So if each car was purchased at 100 million shillings, it means I'll credit the supplier's account with 1 billion. Of course, the supplier will issue me an invoice that states that I have to pay the 1 billion. However, upon inspection of the 10 cars, I discover that two of the cars were damaged during transit. Because they were damaged, I decide that I need to send these cars back to the supplier. But remember, when I received these cars, I had credited the supplier's account with one billion. Now that I am returning these two cars, it means that I have to reduce the supplier's account by the value of the two cars that I am returning. In accounting, we just don't directly subtract the two cars from the one billion directly, but instead we debit the supplier's account by the value of the two cars we are to return. In this case, we debit the supplier's account in our books by 200 million. This debit entry will be accompanied by a debit note, which we will send along with the rejected cars to the supplier. This debit note is simply informing the supplier that a debit entry has been made in their account. So this brings us to this definition, that a debit note, therefore, is a document stating that a debit entry has been made in an account and stating the amount of entry and the reason for making it. A debit note is sent by a customer to the supplier to inform the supplier that the amount recorded in the customer's accounts as owing to the supplier has been reduced because of an allowance or return of goods or cancellation. Credit note. Using the same illustration before, after returning the two cars to my supplier, I have eight cars remaining to sell. An organization makes a purchases order for three cars. All formalities are made, and so I deliver three cars to their premises on credit. So in my books, I will open up an account for this customer. Since I have delivered the car to my customer on credit, to me, the customer is a debtor. And so I'll open up an account I'll call debtor's customer account. So since I've sold three cars on credit, I'll debit the customer's account by the selling price of the three cars. So, if each car's selling price is 150 million, it means I'll debit the amount with 450 million. Now, if this customer inspects the three cars that I have supplied and he finds fault with one of them, he may want to return it to me. So when the customer returns the one car, it means that I'll have to adjust the accounting records in my books. Remember, on the customer's records, there is a debit entry of 450 million. Because one of the cars has been returned, I'll have to reduce the 400 million with the price of one car. That is 150 million. And so, to effect this, I'll credit his account by 150 million. After crediting the account to correct this anomaly, I'll accompany this with what we call a credit note, which serves to notify my customer that a credit entry has been made on his account. So to define what a credit note is, a credit note is simply a document stating that a credit entry has been made in an account and stating the amount of entry and the reason for making it. A credit note is sent to a customer to inform the customer that a previously invoiced charge has been cancelled wholly or partially. It is important to note that a credit note is issued when some of the goods sold or purchased are returned, like I have illustrated earlier. However, the credit note can also be issued to correct a price overcharge. Purchases order. Using our earlier illustration, if in my business I would like the car manufacturer to supply me with cars for resale, I'll write a document that will serve to notify the car manufacturer 
that I need those cars supplied to my business premises. This kind of document is what I am calling a purchase order. In other words, a purchase order is a document prepared by the buyer to place an order for supply of goods. It gives details of the supplier, quality, quantity and description, price per unit, source reference, time and place of delivery, and so on. This order is fully authorized and signed by the buyer. Sales order. Again, even for sales order, I'll illustrate using the previous illustration. In the previous illustration, I said that I buy cars from a certain manufacturer and resell them. So if I need to purchase cars, I'll write a purchases order and send it to my car supplier. So when my car supplier receives the purchase order, he will generate a document to back up my purchase order. And rather than base on my purchase order to issue me with the cars I've ordered, he'll instead base the sale of the cars to me using a document he has generated himself. This document is what we call a sales order. In other words, a sales order is a document generated by a supplier from the customer's purchases order and it assists the supplier in monitoring the sales process instead of relying on the customer's purchases order. Bank paying slips. In most banks in my country, when you need to deposit money into the bank, you first fill out what we call a bank paying slip. A paying slip is simply a sheet used to record deposit of money into a bank account. The money could be either cash or check. The paying slip gives evidence that money has been deposited into a bank account and it is this document that provides the information that is fed into the cash books. Check. If I have money in the bank and I need to pay someone, it means I need to go to the bank, withdraw the money, and then pay that someone. However, instead of first withdrawing the cash from the bank to pay this someone, I could instead tell the bank to pay this person on my behalf. And in order to do this, I write what we call a check. A check is a written order signed by the bank account holder instructing a bank to pay a specified amount of money to a person named on the check. This means the check will have three persons. These are the person who raises the check, that is the bank account holder, and this is technically known as the drawer. Then the bank to whom the check is written, the bank is technically known as the drawee. Then the person to whom the check is payable, this person is known as the payee. Receipts. If you're running a business selling products or offering a service, when your customers pay you, you need to acknowledge that you received the money. In accounting, this is done by issuing a receipt. In other words, a receipt is a written acknowledgement of money received or paid out. When you pay out the money, you receive a receipt, and when you receive the money, you issue a receipt. Payment voucher. A payment voucher is simply a document that is used to show that money has been paid out. It is prepared by the customer as evidence of payment to the supplier. In most cases, a payment voucher is always prepared against an invoice or a bill of services rendered. Delivery not. Still, I'll use the illustration before. I have this business where I sell cars to the final consumer. When I want to purchase cars for resale, I issue a purchase order to the car manufacturer and in response, the car manufacturer will send the vehicles I ordered. Now, when these vehicles are delivered to my business premises, these cars come along with a document called a delivery note. A delivery note is simply a document that is sent from the seller to the buyer accompanying goods. It provides evidence of physical transfer of goods to acknowledge receipt of the goods. The note gives the description of the goods as to the quantity, quality, 
and should agree with the goods actually delivered. This provides information for recording transactions in the store's register. So, after receiving the cars and inspecting them, I am required to acknowledge receipt of the cars, and to do this, I'll write a goods received note. A goods received note is the document that gives the details of goods received, inspected, approved, and paid, and placed in stock. It is sent by the buyer to the seller as acknowledgement of the goods received and contains the details of the debt, supplier, the number of items, description of goods, quality, and delivery note reference. To wrap this up, let's point out the common features on most source documents. Most source documents definitely have the name and address of entity raising the document, the title of the document, the name and address of the entity for whom the document is raised, the date for which it is raised, the amount involved in the transaction, both in figures and in words, details of the transactions involved, name and signature of the preparer, reviewer and authorizing or receiving official, just to mention but a few. If you feel there is any source document we've left out and you feel it should be discussed, please let us know in the comments below. If you're watching this video for the very first time, if you're considering subscribing to this channel is a very good idea, I encourage you to subscribe. I also encourage you to share this video in your WhatsApp platforms, in your other social media platforms so that your other classmates may benefit from this depth of information in this video. This comes to the end of this video. Like this video if you like it. I mean, gives it a, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Be sure to subscribe. Check out other awesome accounting-related stuff on the channel. And as always, thank you guys very much for watching. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia from Kampala, Uganda, and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.